First, it was bounced paychecks for workers. Now, former Latitude 360 employees can't get unemployment benefits. Action News Jax has been investigating problems with the company long before it closed earlier this month. Action News Jax, Jenna Bourne is live on the south side. Jenna, those employees tell you they're getting desperate now. I came out here to try to get answers for them. You can see the Latitude 360 bus in the driveway here. This is the smaller of CEO Brent Brown's two San Marco homes. Several sources tell me he's been working out of this house since the shutdown. But the man who came out of this home wouldn't answer my questions. I was upset, you know, devastated, you know, that I wouldn't be getting any sort of help or whatever, you know, I have bills just like everybody else. Jeff Land says he worked as a cook at Latitude 360 for three years, which is why he was surprised to see all these zeros when he went to file for unemployment benefits. This is an unemployment statement that I got, and it's showing that I have no wages that I made at all, absolutely. They have no records of me like ever working there. He says several of his fellow former employees have experienced the same thing, and now he's worried about whether he'll even be able to file his tax return. I'm not even sure if we're gonna get our W-2s. His former coworker, Melissa Rome, invited us to come with her as she tried her shot at the unemployment office. It'll be days before she finds out whether she's denied too. She says Latitude 360 already owes her nearly $2,000 because the bank won't cash her final two paychecks. What would you say to the CEO of Latitude 360? He just screwed over a lot of people, people that have families. I'm so angry right now. I mean, I could say a lot of stuff to him. He deserves, you know, to be put in jail, you know, and he needs to be, pay all of us. I left messages for Latitude 360's CEO Brent Brown, President Greg Garson, and the man in charge of payroll, Tom Bass. None of them have answered my questions. Broken promises, canceled health insurance. Action News Jax has spent months investigating the failed local hotspot Latitude 360. Action News Jax investigator Jenna Bourne sat down with a corporate whistleblower who takes us inside the company's finances and failures. And she is live at the state attorney's office. And Jenna, this is about more than employees just not getting a paycheck. In an exclusive interview, a woman who worked in Latitude 360's corporate office tells me the CEO was making money hand over fist. Just last week, I told you first, the state attorney's office is now investigating. We wanted to know, where did all that money go? Uh, I need it. I've got a baby going to be born here within the next week. Former Latitude 360 employee Andrew Cabrera is trying to find a new job. Without warning, Cabrera and dozens of other workers were out of a job, denied unemployment benefits, and health insurance he paid for isn't there. With his wife due with their baby boy any day, Cabrera says he's desperate. It's been terrible. I mean, everybody's, like I said, scrambling around trying to get jobs. Nobody, of course, in the service industry is really hiring right now because it's right after Christmas. Employees tell me the shutdown happened fast. It just started like just spiraling down just very, very, very rapidly. Former bowling counter manager Marcus Rodriguez says just days before the shutdown, CEO Brent Brown promised the entire staff a raise. It was all a setup. It was all a lie. But this woman who worked in the corporate office says she saw the collapse coming. It's been going down since it started it was just a matter of when she's asked us to disguise her face and voice out of fear of retaliation why were the checks always bouncing so there was never any money in the account i don't know where it went because venues were making a lot of money but everyone in corporate was making a lot of money so i guess that's where it all went these documents show Latitude 360 owes more than one and a half million dollars in federal state and county taxes. Did you see anything in, in court well, when you were in the corporate office that indicated where that money was going? I mean, you've seen the house Brent lives in in his car, and he's got multiple Range Rovers. This is where Brent Brown lives, a gated waterfront home in San Marco. That is when he's not living in his New York City apartment on Broadway, and when he's not working out of this second San Marco home. For six months, I've worked to get Brown on camera for an interview. On January 7th, I got him on the phone. I think it's important to put a face with these, these statements. Can we schedule yeah, a time yeah, for I, that to I, happen? I, I don't disagree with that. After promising to sit down with me, Brown never again returned my calls. 
While he hides behind the gates of his waterfront home, his former employees face financial ruin. This father of a newborn is now facing eviction, his health insurance canceled. We have a three week old child and we're going through this. It's, it's not easy. It's very difficult. I reached out to the FBI, IRS, Department of Revenue, and the Florida Office of Financial Regulation. None of those agencies will confirm whether they are also investigating Latitude 360. Tonight, only Action News Jax has a letter that reveals the Jacksonville-based company was $20 million in debt years before it shut down. This is Action News Jax at 6 on CBS 47 and Fox 30. I'm John Bachman. And I'm Tanika Hughes. The resignation letter was written by the former chief financial officer of Latitude 360 nearly three years ago. In it, he describes the massive debt, employees not getting paid, and venues operating without insurance. Action News Jax, Jenna Bourne is live with the investigation, and Jenna, the former CFO, sued his employer. And he won. The judge ordered his old bosses here at Latitude 360 Corporate to pay him more than $100,000. After reading his resignation letter, we wanted to know how all these red flags he lists went unnoticed for so long. That's crazy. Crazy. That's how former Latitude 360 cook Jeff Land describes this letter from former chief financial officer Craig Phillips. His 2013 resignation letter to the board says the company is millions in debt, owes millions in taxes, was hit with more than $250,000 in bank fees from bouncing checks, and wasn't insuring its facilities where children play and adults drink. But most frustrating for Land is this. The CFO says the company was withholding taxes from employees' paychecks, but not paying it to the government, knowing it could, quote, jeopardize the employees. Just blown away way that you know they would allow this to keep going on for you know so many years or whatever and then not anybody do anything about it this letter was written a year after CEO Brent Brown bought this gated waterfront mansion in San Marco and three months before a lawsuit says he bought this Aston Martin with latitude 360 stock how does this go unnoticed at a company for so long what's happened here is there was not enough oversight from the board or from the individual shareholders or from the federal government or the state government. Carson says Phillips likely wrote this letter to cover himself in case the company was ever investigated. Does this letter let him off the hook? If I write a letter like this and I only give it to one person and I don't give it to enforcement authorities, I really haven't eliminated my personal responsibility. Phillips' attorney confirms his client never reported these red flags to the authorities. Action News Jack's law and safety expert Dale Carson tells me if these board members knew about these financial red flags and didn't report them either, they too could face serious legal consequences. Reporting live on the South Side, Jenna Bourne, CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News Jax. What do you have to say to your investors? What do you mean, what do I have to say to my investors? Exactly that question. Tonight, Action News Jax is asking the CEO of Latitude 360 tough questions. It is the first time we've gotten him on camera since Latitude 360's flagship in Jacksonville and two other locations suddenly closed. And tonight, hundreds of workers are still waiting to be paid. Action News Jax, Jenna Bourne started investigating this company months before the shutdown. And Jenna, you pushed Brent Brown on why he's been traveling to Dubai and we were able to catch up with him because a source told me he was picking up a check here for furniture he sold today. As soon as he walked out those doors and into this parking lot, I started asking questions. Why wasn't Latitude 360 paying taxes? We were looking for funding. We need funding. Company needs funding. So you skipped paying taxes? That's what you cut? No, no, the company needs funding. What are you doing now to get it? How did you get the money to fly to Dubai? Why aren't you showing up to court? We have a franchise partner there. Latitude 360 CEO Brent Brown climbed into his Range Rover, but our conversation wasn't finished. He's accused of owing millions of dollars to unpaid employees, unpaid contractors, unpaid landlords, and unpaid lenders. I also found evidence of his company's failure to pay millions in federal, state, and local taxes. You know, you act like you're uh, out there protecting the, the, the public, but you're not. You're hurting these employees. You're hurting the whole company, and you're hurting, hurting the brand. What's hurting his employees is not yeah, paying right. them. Why don't you be honest with your, with your, with your viewers? Why don't when you be honest? When are you, you going to be honest with your employees? You be honest. 
I am honest with my employees. I, I employed them for over five years. By telling them they were going to get raises and then shutting down? Oh, come on. I asked former employee Andrew Cabrera whether Brown was honest with him. He sent me this text, which says, in part, that is complete garbage. In the weeks before the shutdown, Brown, quote, told every one of us to our faces that we shouldn't believe what we were hearing about the company, that we were safe and had nothing to worry about. The CEO of Latitude 360 is accused of attacking a 64-year-old woman who was trying to serve him court papers. You're going to be in trouble for yeah. trying to run over somebody? Yeah, right. The process server shot this cell phone video after she says Brent Brown hit her with his car. Brown was on his way to a deposition for a different case against Latitude 360. Action News Jax, Jenna Bourne was the only reporter who showed up and started asking questions. And Jenna, he tells a very different side of this story. Brown got up and left as soon as he saw me. As he was walking away, he told me that woman jumped on this car you can see through the fence here, and it happened right outside his gated San Marco home. The lawyer who was deposing Brown this morning tells me he's concerned about where his company's money went. I refuse to sit here and do a deposition in, in front of the media. So just for the record, now for the record, I'm out. Okay. Latitude 360 CEO Brent Brown briefly held the door closed when I started asking questions. Did you attack a process server this morning? I was attacked. He should be ashamed of himself as a man. He's not a man. No man would do that. This 64-year-old grandmother says her elbows and knee were injured when Brown hit her with his Range Rover. You attacked me, you attacked my car, and you slammed my car, you damaged my car. Attorney Mark Rubin was deposing Brown because Latitude 360 hasn't paid the $100,000 judgment it owes its former chief financial officer. Obviously, he was very upset to see you. Rubin says he still has questions about Brown's web of other companies. There are some concerns about the about whether some of those funds were deviated from the main company into other companies. Why wouldn't you go through with the deposition? Why did you show up at the deposition? To get your side of the story. Yeah, I bet. Why wouldn't you give us your side of the story on this? That's what depositions are for. Arrest could come in a matter of months in the Latitude 360 investigation. It has been more than seven months since the Jacksonville-based hotspot suddenly shut its doors. Its employees were jobless and their paychecks bounced. State Attorney Angela Coy revealed new details in the case to Action News Jack's investigator Jenna Bourne in an exclusive interview. Employees and investors tell me they're getting frustrated, so I went straight to Angela Corey for answers. Lord have mercy, Jenna, it's so complicated. I met Corey here at her campaign office, just a few doors down. From the office where Latitude 360 employees went to file for unemployment benefits, only to find out their wages were never filed with the Florida Department of Revenue. I am stunned that in light of some of the cases that have made national attention, like Bernie Madoff comes to mind, I'm just stunned that this, this can still happen in this day and age. Where are the controls? Where, where is the monitoring? In my series of investigations on Latitude 360, I also uncovered evidence that the company owes millions in unpaid taxes and took money out of employees' paychecks for health insurance, but never paid that money to the insurance company. So what's taking so long? You know, I hate to use such a cliche, but it's like peeling back an onion. It's been one layer at a time. She says part of the challenge is this web of companies under the Latitude 360 umbrella, and that's why she's calling on the FBI for help. The fact that there are so many different umbrella corporations here, is there a legitimate purpose for that other than potentially to try to hide things. You know, Jenna, that's where we hope the feds will come in and help us because they are the experts on that type of multi-state corporate financial white collar crime. She tells me her team is investigating about 10 people involved in managing the company's finances. We thought it was a very a place filled with positive energy only to find out there were things going on behind the scenes that even the employees couldn't have known about. So that's what we're looking into. Corey tells me she will likely hold a victim meeting later this year to update former employees and answer their questions on the investigation. Reporting in the newsroom, Jenna Bourne, Fox 30, Action News Jax.